So back to what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to add a Kismet to the name and the email fields. And how we do that is I have to go over here to generate tag and I'm going to create a new text field and I'm not going to bother naming it. All I'm after is the Akismet syntax. So here where it says Akismet optional, if we were doing this for the first or last name field then we just click this box and you can see it's automatically added the Akismet tag. So at this point I want to add this I just want to copy this, this just this part I just want to add it to my name field up here. Okay, and I'm done. Uh, now I need to do the same thing for email. So the reason why I'm clicking generate tag is because I don't have the syntax memorized. There we go. So I just need to copy this part, I'll pop it in my tag. Okay, you could delete these entire fields and start all over again if that's easier for you. Like for example, I could have just called this your email. And made it required. And then if you'll notice I have a complete tag here that I can replace the old tag with. So you can do it that way too, if that makes more sense to you. Now if I didn't mention it before, um, to use the Akismet filtering, you have to have a key installed. And those of you who are veteran WordPress users, probably the first thing you do when you set up a new WordPress site is you install the Akismet key. Uh, now this tutorial isn't about uh, how to get a key and installing it. So as long as you are using it on your WordPress website, you can use that feature in Contact Form 7. So I'm done here. I'm going to click Save. Now the appearance of my form won't change just because I've added Akismet. Kind of, it works in the background. What it does is it checks the uh, spam databases um, and if the message appears like it's coming from a spammer then the yeah, Akismet will not allow that message to go through. So let's test this out. So I'm, I'm gonna fill this in with some information. And we'll hit send. Okay. Here's the text that shows up after someone has submitted a, a message. And I'll just point that out a second time. If we come down here, uh, we can edit these different messages that show up. So if there was a problem with my form, let's just, let's just force a problem. Uh, I'll leave email blank. And so I should get an error message here when I click send. So because your email is required, we got an error message here. So that's how that works. Now one more thing I want to demonstrate is we can change the field sizes. As I mentioned before, the way to do that again is let's say I wanted to make your name longer than it is over here. So let's just say I wanted to extend it out, uh, maybe 10 characters. So to get the syntax, I could create a brand new field using generate tag, or I can just copy the syntax and I can just say, well, at this point, I'm just going to guess. I'm going to guess that 50 will be as long as I want. And you can see the syntax for sizing is very simple. It's just a number and a slash. So all I have to do is add this to my tag and I should be okay. Okay, actually it goes, it's supposed to go before, well let's see if this works. It's not exactly the same syntax but as the generate tag showed, but let's let's see if that 
yeah, it worked anyway. So I was able to extend the um, your name field. Now I don't really want it extended, so I'm just going to change it back. Delete that. Hit save. I'm happy the way it was before. Okay, back to normal. Now the text box has different syntax. Um, it's not the number and a slash. Because it's a text area field, it's not a text box. It's a text area. So to get that syntax, we click on text area. And text areas, for those of you who know HTML, are sized by rows and columns. So the default size, I'm not sure, but uh, let's just say 80 columns, see if that how big that makes it, and rows, we'll do 20 rows. That should give us a nice big text box. So if we go down here, we see the syntax is columns by rows. So we can paste that in. I'm just going to type it. It's probably faster. 80 by 20. Let's hit save. OK, now we got a supersized text message box. Obviously, I don't want to leave it like that. It's spilling over into my sidebar. So let's delete that, bring us back to normal. OK, very good. So one last thing I can show you is the message that I received. So this is the message that came in from the test I did a few minutes earlier. And I see there's a problem. So the phone number didn't come through. My message body came through. The email came through. I used notefortom at gmail.com. The subject, if you remember, uh, this is the subject that I, that I typed in. So everything's working, but phone didn't come through, so we need to fix that. So this is good. We get a chance to troubleshoot our form a little bit. So here's our form field. And I don't see any reason why it shouldn't come through. Okay, I see it. I see the problem. I didn't realize that. So the syntax actually is different. It changes from the form to the message. So I had the word, I had it copied exactly word for word, like this tag. Yet if we compare message body, see here's the, the tag for the message body, the word text area is taken out of the tag down here. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's not, this is consistent. It's not in the text type or the data type is not part of the syntax when we get down to the message. So that's very important um, because it doesn't tell you, there's nothing here to indicate that fact. So let me hit save and let's test this and see if uh, this thing is working. What is this, test 5? Send. OK. And there we go. Got a phone number. Excellent. Well, that's how to add a contact form to your WordPress website. I hope this video tutorial has been helpful. And thanks very much for watching.